Hi there. So I've moved the boat down onto the Coventry Canal. I'm out of the um, flood risk areas on the Trenton Mersey. And today I'm going to be talking about one of the sources of power you would have on a narrowboat. There's usually four sources. Um, the first would be plugged into shoreline, which is in the UK, it's 240 volts, usually at about 16 amps mains electricity effectively um, and that would plug into your boat and you would be able to charge your batteries and do all sorts of things the second thing is um, using your engine um, on the engine of an hour boat there's an alternator sometimes one sometimes two I've got two um, and they charge your starter battery as well as your house batteries the problem with that is you're adding extra hours of usage onto your engine and therefore it needs servicing more regularly and you're using a huge great big engine to run some alternators. There's also um, the theory, some people say that the engine is better and it runs more efficiently when it's under load. So some people put their boats into tick over even though they're moored up um, and charge their batteries. I don't really like doing that because you create a wash, you annoy other boaters and more importantly you erode the, the banks of the canals especially as I moor up in, in country areas. The uh, third, third thing you can use is solar power. I've got two solar panels on my roof um, I will be going into a real detailed um, couple of videos on my electrics. Um, now that's been quite good, but during the, the dark and dingy days of the winter, it's been quite tough. So around about a year ago, I purchased a Honda generator. And today I'm going to talk about the generator. I'm going to talk about servicing it. Um, my generator has been converted for LPG as well as petroleum, so effectively gas or petrol, as it is in the UK, um, and which is more fuel efficient. I have a Honda EU20i generator. It can produce 1.6 kilowatts of power at the UK rate of 240 volts. It's said to be one of the quietest suitcase generators on the market and I purchased it converted to use either petroleum or LPG gas. It has two UK sockets and has the ability to put the generator into eco mode. This switch allows the engine to run in idle but when required it throttles to cope with a higher load. This I have found keeps the generator as quiet as possible and is more fuel efficient. For safety, it's always best to operate a generator on the towpath. Because of this, I have a thick anchor chain welded into one of the stern lockers, and it's long enough to connect the generator to the boat at all times, either when stored away or when in use. When operating a generator on LPG, you can have the secondary regulator fitted to either the side of the generator or the top of the gas bottle. To reduce the width of the generator, I decided to have the bottle mounted version. The double regulator is fitted to the bottle and the LPG is fed to the generator via flexible orange pipe. As I store my gas bottles in the stern in my gas locker, I requested the hose to be extra long to reach the towpath on either side of Alice. At the bottom side of the generator is a small orange hose and connector. The hose from the gas bottle is plugged into this. The gas is turned on and the priming button is pressed on the larger regulator. As long as there's no petrol in the generator, it could be started exactly the same. I've plugged a standard energy measuring meter into the generator. Here are my calculations. I have a standard sized 13 kilogram LPG gas bottle. This is the most frequently used size and I have on average paid £28 for a replacement. 
A 13 kilogram bottle is said to have between 24 and 26 litres of LPG in it, so let's say 25. That calculates to one pound and 12 pence per litre of gas. After what seems like months and months of testing, I have generated 15.99 kilowatt hours, so let's say 16 kilowatt hours from the full bottle. That is 1.5625 litres of LPG gas per kilowatt hour produced, or £1.75 per kilowatt hour. I've also tested the fuel efficiency of petroleum. At the moment, a litre of unleaded petrol from a UK forecourt is £1.18.9. I generated 22 kilowatt hours from an equivalent volume of 25 litres of petrol. That is 1.1363 litres of petrol per kilowatt hour produced. £1.35 per kilowatt hour at the current pump prices. So my calculations have determined running a generator on petrol is currently cheaper and uses less fuel per kilowatt hour produced. It's now time to service my generator. For the service, I'm going to use the oil provided to me when I purchased the generator, and that is 10W40 type. I also have a new CR5 HSB spark plug. The tools I will need are a pair of gloves, a large flat-headed screwdriver, a small funnel, some paper towels, a spark plug wrench, and a spark plug gap feeler gauge. Using the flat-headed screwdriver, Unscrew the holding screw on the side of the generator and remove the maintenance cover. Then unscrew the cover from the air filter. Remove the two filters from the housing. Clean both filters in some warm soapy water. Squeeze them in the water to remove any dust or dirt. Try not to twist or wring the filters. Dry the filters on a bit of towel and again pat dry rather than wringing them. Dip the filters in a small amount of clean engine oil. This applies a small coating of oil to the filter. Put the filters back into the generator's housing. Replace the air filter cover and screw back on. Whilst the maintenance cover is still off, at the bottom left corner is the oil filler cap. I removed it and tipping the generator slightly, I poured the used oil into a container. Although I was able to get most of the oil into the container, it does have a habit of spilling, so that's where the paper towels came in handy. Once the oil has all drained out, I put a small funnel into the filler cap tilted the generator back and added around 350 millilitres of oil. The generator holds 400 millilitres, so using the side of the bottle I could guesstimate what I was putting in. Leveling the generator I topped up the remaining until the oil was level with the top of the screw in cap hole. I then replaced the oil filler cap. Finally, on this side of the generator, I replaced the maintenance cover and screwed it back on. In this service, I will also replace the spark plug. Using the screwdriver, remove the spark plug maintenance cover. Pull the spark plug cap off the plug. Using the spark plug wrench, I unscrewed the spark plug. I removed my new spark plug from its box and checked it for cracks or damage. The gap between the electrode and the plug should be 0.024 to 0.028 inches. Using the feeler gauge, I slid the plug onto the gauge at its smallest point. I then slid the plug around until it stopped. The plug stopped at around 0.026 inches. This was the correct gap I required. I screwed the plug back in by hand and tightened it using the wrench. I will keep an eye on its tightness after a few uses to ensure it hasn't loosened off. I then replaced the spark plug cover and my generator service was complete. I've included links to all the items I've used and discussed in this episode 
in the description below. If you like this episode, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave a comment. Until next time, see you later.